that Abraham Lincoln freed all men, but it was Sam Colt who made them equal. Everyone wanted one of his guns, so he had to find a way of mass producing them. And that meant borrowing someone else's idea again. Colt didn't have far to go for inspiration. A place called the Springfield Armory was just up the road. It had been set up by the Yankees just before the Civil War. Here they pioneered the idea of the production line, replacing craftsmen with the techniques of mass production. Colt realized that if he copied what they'd done at Springfield, he could increase output and reduce costs. He was years ahead of his time. The Colt Armory soon became the world's largest gun factory, and 80% of production was done by machine, allowing thousands of guns to be produced each week. So, Sam Colt's revolver was the first truly mass-produced consumer product, and soon the entire business community began to copy his techniques. When Ford wanted to mass-produce the Model T, he based his production line on the armory system. So, just as attempts to make better cannon had led to better steam engines, the gun, through the work of men like Whitworth and Colt, led to improvements in manufacturing and the mass production of consumer goods. In short, the gun paved the way for vast chunks of modern Western society. But then it's also made sure that there are far fewer of us around to enjoy it. We can argue all we like about whether the gun was a good thing or a bad thing, but there is no doubt that it did change the world. And we haven't even got yet to the most important gun of them all. This, the machine gun. Colt's revolver could fire six shots before it needed reloading. A machine gun could fire 600 a minute. 20 rounds, 20 rounds of tracer from a machine gun and half of Wiltshire is on fire. Look, three fires, one, two, three. Now they've got to go and put it out. Sorry. The first fully automatic machine gun came from an American inventor and part-time shepherd, Hiram Maxim. Born in 1840 to a poor family from Maine, Maxim spent a good deal of time helping on the farm. But he was far more interested in machines than livestock and dreamt of being a famous inventor. Aged 14 and doubtless bored by all the tranquility, Maxim came up with a design for a machine gun. But his uncle told him it was a ridiculous idea that would never work. Maxim abandoned the idea and went on to invent an automatic mousetrap, a coffee substitute, a novel type of hair curling iron and a locomotive headlight. In all, he was awarded a staggering 271 patents. By 1881, he was a hugely successful engineer working on the electrification program of France. While Maxim was in Paris, he ran into someone who said to him, Look, you want to make a fortune. Why don't you invent something that will help these Europeans kill one another more quickly? It rekindled that old idea he'd had back in Maine. So he moved to London and started work once more on the machine gun. When it was announced to the world that an American engineer had developed a gun, basically this one, which would fire at the touch of a button and then reload itself. The report was labelled incredulous. Maxim's gun used a simple but clever concept. 
When bullets are fired, the explosion of gunpowder creates recoil. Maxim used the power from that recoil, the jolt backwards, to operate the machine gun mechanism itself. One man with a Maxim could shoot 600 rounds a minute, the equivalent of nearly 100 rifles. Maxim demonstrated his machine gun to interested buyers by using it to chop down trees. The British Army, however, didn't need to be beguiled with tree surgery. Maxim's gun was just what they were looking for. They'd learned to their cost that it was possible for the modern soldier with a rifle to be defeated by an enemy with spears if there were enough of them. The machine gun, however, well, one man with a Maxim could do the work of a hundred ordinary soldiers. A unit of ten men suddenly had the firepower of a thousand. Thanks to the machine gun, the army's grip on the empire was unassailable. Queen Victoria was so impressed that Maxim was awarded a knighthood. But machine guns, like all new developments, were at their most effective when the opposition didn't have them. And by 1914, the turkey shoot was over. The First World War was kicking off, and the Germans had machine guns too. Suicidal cavalry charges were quickly abandoned. The machine gun had changed the face of battle. It led to trench warfare and bogged everything down. Now a new weapon was needed to clear the trenches and open it up again. To clear a trench, you need to fire at close range. So a chap called Colonel J. Thompson developed this, a submachine gun, small, light, portable. You could fire it from the hip, you could fire it from your shoulder, you could fire it if you wanted from the back of your Buick. This is the Tommy gun. <laughs> 